Well, I remember that show very well. I did that with uh, John Morgan and Joe Mennell, and um, it was uh, really almost two years ago, a year and a half ago. But uh, I think here in Detroit we had done, uh, probably more so than most American cities, more so than probably any other major American city, all of what I'd call sort of the textbook things to do. But it's obvious that what we had done was totally inadequate to meeting the problems that exist in a city like Detroit. So when you say why, uh, there are a number of uh, answers to that. Uh, one is that uh, there really hadn't been any meaningful movement of uh, the people that are popularly now called the have-nots in into the rest of our society. They're outside our society. Many of them don't have jobs. Uh, certainly most of them don't have uh, equal educational opportunities. Uh, there's all sorts of very vast differences, and they're not really bound by the same rules and regulations and uh, prescripts of society that uh, bind most of the people in America. So at the slightest provocation, they turn to the streets and violate the law by looting and burning and things of that kind. But let me say this, that I have said it many times before, but I'd say it again with you, that I do believe that what happened in Detroit is merely something that has happened and will continue to happen in many other American cities. It was sort of a geographic happenstance that the damage the rioting and the looting was as wide as it was in Detroit. It could just as easily have happened in New York City or Chicago or Cleveland. That may sound defensive, and maybe in part it is defensive, coming from the mayor of this city, uh, but I do believe that it's true. Uh, there's a national sickness that's afflicting all of our cities. All we've done in the past is deal with it uh, in, in a very, very cursory or superficial way. It's almost like putting a Band-Aid on on an extremely bad and open wound, and it just hasn't been enough. Before I ask you what you think ought to be done, can I ask you about what happened in Detroit itself a week ago? Were, the, were things made worse, as some people suggest, by delay on the part of President Johnson in sending in federal troops? And do you think, as people suggest, that he was trying to score on Michigan's Governor Romney? Well, I, I would have to say uh, uh, no in response to both of those questions. Uh, I, there's no way of knowing, of course, that had federal troops come in four hours earlier than they had come in, that any more lives would have been saved, because at the point that the federal troops had come in, uh, most of the worst damage as far as rioting and looting and burning had really taken place. And after the federal troops appeared on the scene, uh, most of the things that were being done was uh, sniping. So uh, it's, uh, there's no way to measure, really, whether if the federal troops had come any earlier that things would have been any better. I do not think, certainly, that either the governor of our state nor the president of our country uh, would use the, uh, the very distressing situation here in Detroit this week for any political advantage, uh, consciously. And I'm sure that neither one did. Uh, no, I don't believe that that's fair to say. I think that uh, probably the easiest thing for anyone to do today, including myself and others, is to render judgments on uh, what happened out on the streets uh, a week ago and on decisions that were made in the heat of battle, so to speak. Uh, hindsight, of course, is always a very uh, easy thing to acquire a week later after the dust of battle has settled. But uh, I will say this, that the tactics which our police department used, the police tactics last Sunday, were tactics that a year ago were used in a rather similar uh, set of circumstances on our east side. And as a result of the use of this restraint and order and reason, uh, our police department was not only praised throughout this community, but praised throughout the country. Now, the same tactics were used Sunday morning a week ago, and obviously they failed to work, and the mob just overwhelmed in numbers uh, our police department. Uh, there are a lot of factors involved, uh, reasons for that, certainly one of them being that the lowest point of police protection in this city, or any American city for that matter, is always Sunday morning. It's like our Pearl Harbor, because our defenses are the weakest. Can you uh, say, Mayor uh, Kavanaugh, whether you have any evidence or suspicion that some of the activity in Detroit, which from a long distance away looked paramilitary in the sense of snipers on rooftops, that this was organized by small groups of people who had been sent in 
Well, I don't have any evidence uh, to that effect. Uh, there have been some uh, hints or suggestions that at least in part uh, some of the activity this week might have been organized. I think initially uh, this rioting started as a spontaneous thing. Uh, and many people participate in it uh, because of uh, almost a carnival-like atmosphere. But I do think that there uh, it could well be that upon adequate investigation that at least some of the sniping uh, was in some degree organized. Uh, that's a very distinct possibility. Now, Mayor Governor, we've all heard a lot as to what needs to be done by way of better housing, better jobs, and so on. But who is responsible for doing this? Because it seems to me that you as mayor of a great city have all the problems, but you have nothing like enough power under the American system. Well, that's exactly right. We have the uh, problems, and uh, in many instances we have the power, but we don't have the resources, the financial resources. The resources, the public resources in this country are either in the state government or principally the federal government. The state governments traditionally have ignored the needs of the urban areas, not just in this state, but practically every state in the Union. And the federal government has only dealt with these things in a very half-hearted manner. So I would lay the public blame principally uh, at the feet of the Congress of the United States because there are numerous programs which our president and the administration have proposed. Uh, many of them, uh, I'd have to admit, are inadequate. But even so, they've proposed them, and the Congress has no disposition whatsoever to act on them. As a matter of fact, and, and it's a strange thing, and it's a most distressing thing to many of us uh, here in the American cities, that the Congress, the reaction of the Congress is to pass stricter riot control bills, assuming that uh, prohibitive measures such as that are going to eliminate riots in the future. It's just absurd, and, but they're reflecting to some degree uh, sort of some forces of reaction that I think all too frequently occupy the mood of our country. Well, uh, I would certainly hope and think that it should cause a change in priorities. Uh, many of us, including myself, but particularly many of the mayors in this country, have been arguing for a number of years that our priorities in this country were all out of balance. We had made really no national commitment on the part of the public or the Congress, uh, or the private sector for that matter, to uh, really start to rebuild our cities, not just physically, but socially as well. And until we really do make that kind of a commitment and mobilize the resources necessary to achieve that commitment, we're going to continue to not just have uh, Detroit type of riots, but even worse if that's at all possible. I heard you say on the NBC program, meet the press uh, earlier this weekend, Mayor Governor, that the Detroit riots might prove to be a watershed in American history. Now, what exactly did you mean? Well, I mean that uh, we can, uh, it's really a turning point in. Uh, the American view toward uh, the problems of cities and toward our whole uh, problems in relation to uh, race relations. We can turn back into hate and fear and recrimination, sort of a McCarthy era uh, can occupy the national mood now, or we can use this as a very agonizing and bitter lesson uh, to plunge ahead much more aggressively uh, into the future as far as funding the programs that are proven to be good uh, that we already have, funding them in a realistic and adequate way, and defining really new dimensions uh, and new directions uh, for approaches to the solutions of these problems. May I ask you one final question? Mayor? Yes, uh, surely. When you, in that program uh, 18 months or so ago from Panorama, you were asked whether the white electorate of Detroit were behind you in your progressive measures in the, on the race question, and you said, Well, I, I think it would only be a correct assessment to say that any time you have a situation occur such as we've had happen here in this city, that people, and it's a natural thing, they tend to want to uh, 
assign blame or responsibility to someone or some groups of individuals. And uh, the man that's in the job of mayor, he receives the accolades when things go wrong, and when things don't go wrong, he has to uh, receive uh, the denunciation as well. So what I'm saying is that I'm not sure that uh, all of the white electorates, certainly if I was to ever stand for office again, would desert me, but I'm sure that many of them are not as enthusiastic about me as they might have been in the past. Thank you. Mm -hmm.